aperture. Hi, everybody. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Leslie Martin. I'm the creative director at Aperture. And for those of you who are not familiar with us, Aperture was founded 70 years ago by a group of artists, writers, and curators as a common ground for photography. Um, today, we're a not-for-profit publisher that connects the photography community and its audiences with the most exciting and urgent work. And we do that in print, in person, and these days, a lot of it online. Um, today, tonight, we are celebrating the 2021 Perry Photo Aperture Foundation Photo Book Awards, and we are thrilled to be joined by Snell Breslov, Sasha Fires Burgess, and Annika Sabin for a discussion around Sasha's book, Untitled, which was the winner of the first Photo Book Award. Um, just a word about the award for those of you who might be unfamiliar. It was founded in 2012 as a way of celebrating the ongoing contribution of the photo book to the history and the future of the, photo of the medium of photography. Um, there are winners in three categories. There's the photography catalog of the year, the photo book of the year, and of course, the first photo book award, which we're celebrating tonight. The winning title in each category is selected by a, uh, a shortlist jury, and we winnow it down from 800 submissions from all over the world to 35 entries in total. And from that set of 35 books, um, there, is, there are winners selected in each of those categories. Um, those three days are uh, three days of a lot of discussion and careful looking with an amazing team of shortlist juries, and one of which Sunel Breslov will be moderating this discussion today. Um, I want to also mention that this list, which really represents an amazing window into the creative output of photo bookmakers from all over the world, is currently on view. So anyone in New York, uh, please check it out, all 35 titles are currently up at Printed Matter through February 27th. Um, the show is also, after the viewing at Printed Matter, the show is going to travel internationally for the remainder of the year. It's going to go from Melbourne to Seoul to Taipei, and you can see the full schedule um, in the chat or by visiting aperture.org. So this is a way of really making sure that these books get seen across the globe. Um, so I want to uh, get to introducing our speakers for this evening. Um, Sunel Breslov is the director of fairs and editions at Printed Matter. As mentioned, she was also a shortlist juror for the 2021 Perry Photo Aperture Photo Book Awards. Um, Annika Sabin is an executive director, is the executive director of Capricious Foundation and the publisher of the book we're talking about today, Untitled. Sasha Fires Burgess identifies as Scorpio, Black, Alive, and a great bookmaker, I would add to that. Um, one last housekeeping item before we begin. We are very grateful that Aperture programs are made possible by the generous donations from our board of trustees, our members, and other individuals, and in part by the New York State Council on the Arts with the support of the New York State Legislature. Um, we're going to get into this now. I want to say that uh, be sure to submit any questions you may have to the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we'll get to them towards the end of the evening. So I'm gonna hand it over to Snell and thank you everyone again. Thanks so much. Thank you, Leslie, Martin and Emily Stewart at Aperture for inviting me this evening um, to be part of this conversation. Hi, Sasha and Hello. Uh, um, I'm really, uh, I just want to say I'm really grateful for this opportunity to get to know more about Sasha's work and this book in the process of preparing for this evening. Um, and I'm also really happy to uh, connect with Annika uh, in this way, specifically um, Capricia and Annika's work and their friendship uh, have been really important to my education and experience with artist books over the years. So I'm really pleased to be um, in conversation with you both this evening. I just want to give a shout out to all the other jurors of the Perry Photo Aperture Award with whom I spent a lot of time with last fall. 
um, in the Avatar offices, reviewing the hundreds of excellent book submissions. Um, and I was going to drop a few links in the chat, uh, but it looks like Emily actually took care of most of it. I just wanted to share where you can purchase the book as well. Um, both uh, available at Print Matter and Capricious. Um, and then um, I thought maybe just uh, also if people um, have not already visited Sasha's website, here is a link to Sasha's website as well. Um, so welcome. And I thought I would just jump right in uh, for those of us who are perhaps less familiar with your work, Sasha, um, and with this book in particular, uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps you can please share with us kind of a brief description. I think we're going to like get into the details of it, but just to kind of an intro to uh, Untitled. Yeah, I, I think Untitled is like a good encapsulation of about like seven to 10 years work of me trying to understand why I'm photographing and also just like enjoying the act of photographing, I would say, and the learning that that provided me. Yeah. Sorry, I'm mad short, like. Yeah, <laughs> no, <great. laughs> um, and That's it, you know? <laughs> no, that was, I asked for brief, so you get, yeah, you, absolutely. I gave it to you. <laughs> That's the same. Um, do you think you can share like a little bit more about the title of the book and mm -hmm. it, it repeats itself a few times as I believe the title of the chapters as well and perhaps mm -hmm. the titles of the body each of the bodies of work but maybe mm -hmm. um maybe just untitled uh yeah as the title of the book maybe you can yeah more there so I'll just say that it began unintentionally like untitled was always a placeholder because I just never knew. I feel like some people are very good with titling. And so they kind of like know how to title things, but it just became a placeholder for me when I was just making work. What's the name of it? It's untitled. I don't know. But then after a while, I realized that I never went back and like changed the name to something else. So like the first one was like um, the first chapter in the book is called Bear Yankee. That was like the one thing I had a title for, but then the next chapter became untitled. And then after a while I added in parentheses and again and again and again and again. And then the third chapter chapter is untitled part two and three, you all have to make compromises. Um, and then it just became this way to say like, it's not titled yet, like it might not ever be. It's not titled and here's some information that might help you get through this. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, I guess to ask a little bit more about how, you know, how some of the decisions around the construction and the design of the book were made. Um, again, like, I think that there's been some images shared of the book, but I thought I would do like a, one of these. Yeah, also <laughs> unveiling. Oh, I'll do it together. <laughs> Um, I'm already exposed. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how the cover actually, I mean, I have some like sticky notes now sticking out of mine, but uh -huh. it, it does actually, we talked about this, the idea of a slipcase and it, it can function as a slipcase, but also the cover comes entirely off. Uh -huh. And there's, you know, I find it to be a very particular red and I was, you know, I was hoping that you could share a little bit more about the decision around the red but also that it functions as, in a way, a frame. The book can be placed on top of it and really does create a frame around all of the images. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, you know, thinking about like the idea of a hug and I started, you know, associating this with a lot of the um, images also inside of the book, which we can mm -hmm. you know, look at a little bit later, but there's, there's a lot of kind of like sensuality to mm -hmm. the way in which um, hands and bodies are being embraced. Mm -hmm. And so it really in some, you know, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but it starts with me with the design choices. And so mm -hmm. I thought maybe we can hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, I'll talk about it. And then also Annika, you can jump in as well, because I feel like it was really like a, so, you know, 
a slip case was something that we did discuss at one point. Basically, the initial process, and I feel like we could go into this bookmaking process, was when I first had like my initial meetings with Annika and Sophie and also Studio Lynn as well. You know, I started taking some pictures of books in the library. At the time, I was uh, in Chicago, so I took books from the Columbia College of Chicago <laughs> Photography Library, and I just went and I just looked at photo books. But then, since I was in there, I was just like looking at books and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I was just looking at stuff, and so I kind of knew there was a certain type of book that I was interested in. Of course, the really big book at the time was the Dana Luxemburg. Luxembourg book, Imperial Courts. And I really just loved the way that book looked. But there was open binding stuff that I was really interested in. There was like stuff with like cardboard on it that I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Things that were like all these different things. So I took pictures of all of it and I sent that to them. And then we kind of started talking about it. We talked about a slip cover case and the possibility of three separate publications, three separate books in there that would come out. And then, um, you know, Annika was like, it's a little bit messy, da, da, da. And honestly, Annika, I feel like, I actually was curious if you could talk about your like book knowledge too, because like, I feel like that really helped a lot of the decisions I made in terms mm -hmm. of like, this should or should not be happening. Yeah, I feel like, well, so when you initially came to us, it was, Kind of through the capricious photo award and you had applied with the dance series mm -hmm. um and i remember um around that time i had just seen um your exhibition at shoot the lobster mm -hmm. so i knew that there was more work and i was kind of interested if you were interested in exploring what it would look like if there were multiple bodies of work mm -hmm. and so once we kind of decided that that was something we could do um, we started thinking of different ways to solve, you know, because these are very singular um, series in a way, you know, they they can exist on their own. So what what is the best way to present these works that um, acknowledge that they're very distinct, but also have kind of a thread moving through them? I mean, even I think they're chronological um, yeah, to your they practice are. as well. So it's kind of this progression of you as a photographer and the questions that you're asking. Um, and yeah, we had, we had kind of talked about three separate books and, um, you know, I think there is an instinct to, with photography books to have a hardcover with like a tipped in image and, um, Very you know, nice. that there's nothing wrong with a classic, but I think, um, for your work, it, it felt like they needed to be nestled closer and, um, three different separate books felt like they were kind of entombing them in a way mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah so exactly saying that yeah yeah so we so we move forward um with uh one book and then it sort of moved on with the collaboration with alex in terms of um the binding and kind of creating this more open um book basically exposed mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I think something also too that now that you're saying that I really do like the thing I like about the case is that it doesn't feel stuffy. Mm -hmm. Like there's something about it that does feel very much like I could throw it around. I like no, I shouldn't. But I <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, I I guess I could also share um, some of the images through the process if this feels like a a good time as well. Um, let's just. Go for it. <laughs> Great. So um, I just kind of created a little slideshow of the process and the pre-production aspects of it. Um, this is one of my favorite photos from, <laughs> from the whole process. Um, so we were lucky enough to actually uh, be able to meet in person. This was in 2019 when we started. That was pre-COVID, y'all. This is pre-COVID, pre-pandemic. Um, so I feel really lucky that we had this space. Um, this is baby company in between exhibitions, and we just kind of took over with all the images. Um, and these are the three series. Um, you can see also that the third series has quite a large amount. So that was a feat kind of figuring out what the best way to um, present all three in equal weight. 
Mm -hmm. um, so I think those were also uh, decisions within the design that sort of made that possible um, as well. And then this is another uh, image from just our first sequencing. And these are the um, from the dance series. Um, and then I wanted to show a couple of the wet proof um, tests. These were done with uh, Alex Lynn. And you can see we tried a number of different things, seeing how um, how the ink um, did. We did black and silver and a, a double hit of black. And we also just kind of wanted to see how the ink would sit on different papers. Um, and this is again, so we, we definitely treated each series very differently in terms of paper and ink. Um, we, for the first and the third series, chose a very uh, like matte white paper, um, which I think kind of intentionally um, was soft and fit with a bit of the grain of the, in particular, the first series, it kind of integrated really well. Um, and then we used a very high gloss um, for the center series, which kind of anchors the book and also kind of mirrors the energy, I think, too, um, of the images and, and the conversation too, um, that we'll get to. So this is just a um, image of the book in various um, undress, I guess, but, um, <laughs> Um, you can see we uh, we used um, a red uh, Coptic binding, and um, of course we we discussed the importance of the red, and we did feel like it kind of created an, a nice palette for the book to lay on as you looked through it. Um, and then the final image is the red thread. It isn't prevalent throughout, but there are a few moments through each series where it kind of peeks through um, and kind of reminds you of the interconnectedness of, of all the series, I think. Um, and I think that uh, felt really nice. So that is um, just a bit of the process of what we were thinking of how the book would come together. Thank you. Thank you. And that note of the red thread was it's it's really subtle and i appreciate you pointing that out because it's not necessarily something that i immediately see i mean the book there's a it's kind of um uh, it's packed you know like in, in these amazing ways like there's there's so much content and um i also feel like there's many ways to just like enter it you know in a way in in the way that you're speaking to it it could have lived as three you know, separate uh, projects. Um, I want to uh, kind of talk a little bit further at, in this, and and specifically more the the text that in, mm -hmm. that is included in the book because there's um, there's a lot, and it's also very different, um, like from each other. Uh, uh, can you um, either Sasha or Annika, I guess, remind me also, each each series is, um, you use a different kind of camera, right? To produce each body of work, is that right? Like there's an intentionality yeah. to the, 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 photog the photography as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, could you just remind us of what, what, uh, what you are using in each, in each series? Mm -hmm. So each body of work, so the first body of work I'm using in the Mia C330, I was shooting on film. The second body of work, I was using a Canon 5D Mark II, probably with a flash on an extender, and I was doing one of these. And the third body of work was a um, 4 by 5 camera. And so I know, like, just in terms of a, discuss a discussion around photography and, li and lineage, you know, like, um, I'm a photographer, like, I... I went to Bard College for my undergrad. It's a rigorous photographic program in which they allow you to have experiences with different kinds of cameras. And I think that that as an initial experience for me, and then the um, experience I had in grad school, which is where I made the first and the second work. So the first work, body of work, I made directly after I graduated college. So it wasn't like I made any of that work in college. It all happened afterwards. And that was over a two or three period of time. Then I made a bunch of work in between there. That's like neither here nor there. 
And then I made the um, first, second body of work during my first year of grad school and the, wait, the third body of work during my second year of grad school. So it was like, um, and I went to Cornell University for grad school. It was um, a fully funded program, I'm gonna say it. And it really, um, it did a lot for me. And one of the most beautiful things that it did for me was give me access to cameras. And it was just like, I was able to just like, use the camera how I wanted to. So the four by five camera I had for a year and I was just shooting, shooting, shooting with it all the time. Like I would go on trips, I'd take the camera with me, I'd shoot, I'd shoot, I'd shoot. And each camera had a different experience and enabled me to do something differently. I think I was thinking about the history of photography. I was thinking about a lineage. Um, I was very lucky enough that after college, I worked with Larry Fink for a year. And he actually gave me that camera or he let me use one of them, one of his. And then I got to use, then I got my own camera because I was so excited about it. And that's the camera that I shot with. And I can say definitely in the second body of work, I was always thinking about the way that like Larry used to like be with the flash and like a lot of his um, intentionality around like shadow and light and the way things felt and stuff like that and I knew I always knew in my head I wanted to do something like that one day so finally you know I was going to parties everybody was partying and I was like when I got to uh, Cornell I was like I'm gonna shoot like the black fraternities and sororities on campus and then I used the digital camera in that way Yeah, um, I mean, I think that the those photographs are so gorgeous, and and but there's like like this connection is so present to you know um, like you know the I think the photograph that was used to like promote this event this evening mm -hmm. like there's like um, there's this like yeah the history of photography and the connection to Larry feels like Larry Fink's work seems very present there. Um, thank you for giving us all those details. Um, yeah, I just I love it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, to I guess you know to to kind of continue on this thought like in terms of like how the text also plays this really oh, yeah, text. Yeah. no 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 this, this I mean there is this distinctness to each of the three sections of the book, but they are connected as, as you guys, you know, had already, have already really beautifully illustrated. Um, so to speak to like the accompanying texts. So the mm -hmm. first section, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just gonna kind of like read through a little bit of like the, the contributions here. Okay. The first section um, is poetry by Aurora Musa Javed and Sarah Musa Lee. Javed. Mm -hmm. And Sarah and Lee. And then there's, so that's the first section of the book. And those are photographed in, can you remind me of the location where you were photographing there? So those were all photographed in Trinidad and Tobago. And so I wanted, the reason why those two people wrote, I wanted them to include their pro poetry for that section was because I felt like, you know, Sarah Delita is like, a, is a Dominican poet and writer and a, Afro-Latina and I know she probably not like that I, but you know what I'm saying like she was I felt like there was a, a lineage there with like kind of coming to terms with a certain type of Caribbean identity and being in the U.S. and I think that's how we made friends with each other and then Aurora Musun Javed I met at Cornell and is also a writer that is South Asian and it was always like something that we were kind of talking about the South Asian influence and presence in Trinidad and Tobago. And so when I knew that she had written this poem about swimming and water, and I felt like that was the thing that, like those were the poems that could hold that section because that's what the, that section felt very um, like held to. And then the second session, section, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was, I could prompt this, this next one as well, the, the series of dance hall photographs. Um, yeah, yeah. With this, that are followed by a quote from Franz Fanon's uh, The Wretched of the Earth, and then mm -hmm. an inscribed conversation between um, you and artist Juliana Huxtable and Carolyn Lazard. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to share a little bit 
more about yeah. how those uh, uh, texts were included in uh, alongside that body of work. Mm -hmm. So um, the France Fanon Wretched of the Earth quote was a quote that I remember Juliana, we went to undergrad together, Juliana and Claire and I, and a group of other people that were part of the darkness. What's up, Tiffany Gaither? I know you're here. What's up, Jose Michelle Brito? I like to do shout outs. What's up, Sarah Mooney? You know what I'm saying? All those people, we were, we would all party together on the weekend because I think that anybody that's an undergrad now and anybody that was definitely in undergrad then, being a person of color in a predominantly white institution is like a powder keg. And it was like, you would spend all week in class being like, <laughs> And then on the weekend, I was just like, so I feel like this quote resonated on a level of trying to understand the need to connect with one's body. And I think I also, when I was at Cornell, the reason why I ended up making this work was because of my experience in undergrad, where, you know, it, there was moments when my body just needed to be free, the idea of release, you know what I'm saying? I think all people, this is a human thing. Uh, and re like reading this, I just remember Juliana picking this quote out and always being very like struck by it and also struck by the way it's situated in that portion of Wretched of the Earth. And Wretched of the Earth as a text that was like seminal in my understanding of myself as a black person in America and understanding myself as a colonial subject both that of Trinidadian parents and also a first generation American, what that meant in terms of global structure and power. And then the art, like the, we just kind of talk about our experiences at, during undergrad and our experiences in general. And it's like, a, we're just talking to each other about it. And I think finding that space at Cornell's campus, I wasn't an undergrad at the time, but, um, I just knew that there would be people there like raging and stuff. And so I was like, I wanna go where people are trying to like experience the limitlessness of their body because that was something that I also knew that I needed when I was that, like that age in that time. So I think that's kind of like what the two texts kind of are about and how they hold each other and how they hold that um, how they hold the first, the second section as well. And, and then the third is uh, the final series photographs is followed by an essay by educator um, Bill Gaskins. Yes, yeah, so Bill Gaskins was one of my advisors when I was at Cornell. And I think that uh, he, I think he like saw me come in there and was like, I don't know how you got here, but shape up, you know, or something like not in a bad way. But again, I think I had spent like um, the past four to five years in the world in my being places that I wanted to be, if that makes sense. I think the nice thing about the time between undergrad and grad school is that you get to go live in the world and decide who do you want to be around? what do you, where do you want to patronage, blah, 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 blah. You go to grad school and you're applying to an institution and you're just going where um, you think feel is best, is for, best for you. But the town that it's in might be, who knows where you might be. I was in Ithaca, New York. And I think that's why Bill was kind of like, hey, you know. And so I think what that helped me do though, was I think it, it provided a sense of guidance and in, in the terms of what I began kind of like putting myself towards in the world. It was kind of like, okay, I know that I'm in Ithaca, New York or wherever, but I'm looking for something. And so, so I think Bill's contribution is really about this encapsulation of the understanding of myself and the photographic practice as this thing that I'm doing of looking and trying to connect with a certain type of intention. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's this repetition, but kind of, you know, specific thing that he writes looking for black life. And it feels like that then finds its, that is 
repeated in the poetry as part of the first section and also in the conversations that you're having with your peers. Like, um, so in a way the text does, at least in my experience, like kind of bring a lot of, you know, the work, it entangles it again. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I wonder, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of being like, being aware of the time, but I, mm -hmm. I do want to ask, I guess, like, if prior to this book, if text and poetry or writing has it, was it part of um, your work in other ways, like in exhibitions that you worked on or projects, mm -hmm. like were you incorporating this? Um, and I guess like also just to extend the question a little bit also to Annika, like, um, and I'm perhaps just not, you know, not as familiar with other books that Capricious has worked on that has this kind of, I think, as like a, such a substantial, I think, amount of text and, and diversity of text within it. So I just wanted to maybe ask, it's, you know, it's two different questions, but um, if, yeah, Sasha, maybe you can share with us. Yeah, or actually, Annika, I'm going to collect my thoughts. Okay, <laughs> sure, you. yeah. Um, yeah, I think when approaching photo books, we often look to different ways of uh, finding texts that articulate in different forms. So, um, you know, for uh, John Edmonds, who was the first recipient of the Capricious Photo Award, we um, had a conversation, an essay, and also something that was a bit um, more poetically driven. Um, so I think we do like to find the spectrum of, of different entry points through text, for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that I, in exhibitions, I think I like to use sound more than, mm -hmm. but I do use text like in certain ways, but I think knowing that, especially knowing how John's book was made and knowing that there was a conversation, there was, I was like, oh, I can include these things. And um, yeah, I wanted to, I almost felt like, yeah, it was necessary to like weight each body of work with a little bit of text, you know, to contextualize mm -hmm. it or set the scene or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think that each series, um, the way that the text informs the work and vice versa, like, I, I think they fit very well. You know, it just... I was thinking while you were speaking about the conversation, that was the the very first text that we received um, in. Oh, I think yeah. you had the conversation in the summer of 2019. So yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So that really, you know, that conversation kind of was the launching point and all the kind of questions that are brought up and sort of the um yeah. So that energy and sort of the the way that you all are um, speaking and kind of creating the space for yourselves is really indicative also of the images. And I find that you can kind of make those um, kind of tangible points between each text and the work that they're kind of speaking on. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, but I think it's really interesting that the conversation was the first one. I didn't realize that I had it so early to just said that. I was like, yeah, that's true. Cause I really do think it sets a certain type of energy. Like definitely, you kind definitely. of like the, the beginning is very quiet and maybe a little bit of contemplative but then you get to the, the middle and it's like and I feel like that conversation encap encapsulates like all of it, that kind of, like the stillness of it, our questions around representation, mm -hmm. especially around the representation of black people in photographs. It's like, you know, it's a question that I ask myself all the time. I make photographs, I'm obsessed with photography and I'm like, you ain't doing nothing because at the end of the day, the problems persist, you know, the problems of what it means to kind of like, uh, what it means to be black in, a, in America, in the world on, on a larger context. And so like, I think for me to have the question to be asking myself often is important for me. And it runs throughout the book, I think, even as I'm looking. Mm -hmm. 
I'm wondering if maybe I can jump ahead then to something that we were kind of starting to talk about yesterday. I want there to definitely be time for you, Sasha, to share some specific images that from your PowerPoint that you've made. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to just kind of like follow following the the thought that you you know kind of are starting there. Um, you know in the process of reviewing like hundreds of submissions for this prize, you know, I think that the jury was remarking on, um, you know, how many occasions uh, uh, that it felt like the pandemic was really like present in the books. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there were these like deep dives into newly discovered archives or older bodies of work that people were kind of just returning to because they had the time. There mm -hmm. were a lot of personal like family portraits um, and like photo narratives of loss and illness and mm -hmm. a lot of personal work, studio work, you know, time. We talked about this a little bit in like preparing for this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about how publishers have had to like learn new ways of publishing find new resources, make, you know, uh, to make and distribute their books. Um, and, you know, something that I think, uh, you know, is definitely part of that conversation is also that, you know, you guys had these photographs were produced um, over the course of like eight or nine years from what I understand. And the production of this book began in 2019, but the kind of, it, it, it landed right before the pandemic. And then, you know, kind of, um, you know, I, I'm wondering if you both can share some thoughts on how, you know, uh, what what may have come up in like 2020, specifically in a moment where there is this kind of heightened awareness around uh, systemic health and social inequities. Um, and that we're specifically putting like, you know, black life, black people in higher risk, and also, you know, the protests that are going on. And so like in the midst of this production and just following what you were just sharing, um, Sasha, maybe there's like a little bit more if you guys could share, you know, if at all this project changed or just like the thinking, you know, of like revisiting these images, like you said, and how, um, yeah. And yeah. yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I'm a black person, it's Black History Month. That's why I'm here, you know what I'm saying? I'm representing, I guess this is what representation is. And I think what the pandemic brought about and what that whole summer for me brought about was the like cursory attention to black people in a moment when I think things had started to hit a wall for everybody. But, you know, all the things that black people have been screaming about since 1492 are there's everybody we're still screaming about them you know I think that um that's on like yeah that's on that that's on period it's the same thing that we've always been saying and I think I as a black person have been given have been allowed certain privileges by way of my parents being born in America by way of certain things like my education to look at these things and realize at the end of the day that I'm going to be black. And the only thing that I know for sure is that I will stay black and die. You know what I'm saying? It's like the only things that are guaranteed for me on planet earth are my me staying black and me dying. Like that's the only thing that I know for sure. And so I think uh, when the pandemic happened, I just was never pressed about anything with the book. So like, if there was a delay, there was a delay. Like. I ate, I had a roof over my head, I was warm. I taught classes from my nice cushy little living room. You know what I'm saying? Like people were really hurting and still are hurting at this moment in time. And so I think uh, I just try to like, I just put it into perspective. Like I, there was no reason for me to be upset with anyone because there was a delay somewhere in the, in the ocean and the red, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was just like, um people are I'm like looking out of my window and seeing people hurting so I'm like this is cool like if it takes a little bit longer it takes a little bit longer I don't you know as long as I'm as long as I'm here I don't have a I ain't Russian like you know I think I just had a moment where everything was just like I had a lot of perspective for myself where I was at this moment in time and also like what was really happening around me you know 
I like, I went to the grocery store. I got, I struggled with the rest of y'all for toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then I went back inside my house and I was safe. So I'm glad that the book came out when it did, even with the delays and with the, I'm glad that I got the opportunity to see the book come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad that everybody that I know and love is in the book. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think um, the ways in which we had to slow down from sort of the global supply chain and the fact that we also were in different areas of the globe. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for that extra time to spend with the work. Um, and if anything, just thinking about uh, 2020, I was a little apprehensive about the book coming out and sort of being framed in like a timely way because it's it's just it's just been time right like you know before 2020 after 2020 like it's it's been time and like unfortunately like the mechanisms of white supremacy haven't changed right so that was my only apprehensive apprehension of it coming out actually in um around 2020 was like that kind of framework around it i guess yeah. if that makes sense it does I think I remember like having a moment where I was like, oh, it's going to come out and all these things are out. But then I was like, if I'm going to be really blunt about it, if it came out two weeks, somebody like people would have been shooting black people in the back. Like it just is like what you right. said. It is yeah. what it is, what it is. And if anything, I hope that it sits in the canon with the rest of the work that's coming out made by black photographers at this time that's asking for someone to just pay attention because I think that's what you actually said something earlier somehow about um like the like the way that I photograph like the sensitivity or the intimacy or something like that and I think and I use the word sensual sensual yes <laughs> and I think um something that's always been important to me and something because when I was making the work in 2017 2012, you know, Trayvon Martin was happening, Philando Castillo, all these things were happening. And I kept thinking about like, when really violent, terrible shit happens, there's always that moment where you wait. And so I was like, the most sensational and the scariest thing that happens to me is like the moments when I'm waiting and I, I feel as though anything could happen to me or my loved ones or anything like that. And it's not the like craziest, wildest like thing that you see on the news. It's the like, it's like the, the dearth of being alive. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it's just like the weight of just like life. And I feel like that weight of life is something that hopefully if everybody is all right, can relate to. <laughs> And I think that's something that's like, yeah, I feel like that's something that I should say about the work, that the waiting, that the, like the light on the table, the like way that your, you know, your friend's back looks when the light hits it, you know what I'm saying? Like the way that your somebody's hair or the thing across the street, like all that stuff, that's like the things that I like hold on to in the world that remind me like okay you just keep doing the thing because there's these things even amongst all of this like shit I don't know I think this is a perfect transition to look at some of the work so. okay <laughs> um, all right I, yeah thank you so much so I'll share my screen mm. So uh, the first body of work, Dare Yankee. I'm just gonna go through the photos and maybe just share a little bit. This is my cousin, Joey. Um, we look very similar. And I think a lot of me being in Trinidad was about me connecting with my family and trying to understand what it meant to be a Trinidadian. Like the colors of the book are red, black and white because those are the Trinidadian those are the colors of the Trinidad and Tobago flag. And I think it's just something that's been following me that I've been very aware of. And um, 
my cousin Joey is grew up in England. So it's like the way that um, being from the Caribbean makes you global and metropolitan just by way of like colonization and its history as a country and your family's migration stories. Um, this was at my grandmother's Tatcha's funeral. And I think, you know, I'm a photographer and I think photographing helps me see through a moment and with the moment. Ooh, thought I took that out. This is my cousin Naya in the big yard in Trinidad. This is a guy that I was on the street, walking down the street and he had this handkerchief on his head, like dudes wear the handkerchief like this. And it looked so cool. And I was like, you look really cool. And I asked to take this photograph. And I just liked his eyes. I just liked the way the shadows came down on his face. Uh, this is a little girl during Kitty's Carnival in Trinidad. So the third body of work and Tyler or again and again and again. Um, so this was the work that I was making with my digital camera, um, of course, influenced by Larry, by Ouija, uh, by, you know, all those kind of like gritty black and white photographers that got in people's faces with a camera. And what, and I was, so I was photographing historically black fraternities and sororities at Cornell University. And the first Alpha Phi Alpha chapter started at Cornell University, I believe. And so I was photographing the Alpha Phi Alpha chapter at Cornell University. And yeah, I would go to these parties that they would have and just hang out and dance and photograph. And then I would send them the photos and they used to post them on Facebook. And I feel like there was always these really um, interesting moments that would happen in the crowd that I'd be like really excited about. And yeah, I was just like pointing my flash at the ground so that it would bounce off the ground and up at these dudes. And these are two members of the Alpha, AKA, is this an Alpha Kappa Alpha? Alpha? Uh, this is sorority at Cornell. And I cut their feet off, but I still like the picture. Uh, Untitled part two and three, we all have to make compromises was a body of work, honestly, that I started making in 2017. And I was really intent on seeing all of my family and friends because I was, because death is prescient, you know? And um, this is my cousin Ashley and her baby EJ in Charlotte. This is in Ithaca, New York. Um, there's like a community center called GIAC. And um, one day I was like, I'm gonna go take pictures. And then I just told all the kids to point at the sky. That's it, that's the story. <laughs> These are my childhood friends, Leilani Miller and Kristen Brooks. This is my auntie Pat. She lives in Brooklyn and that's her daughter Chloe uh, holding her hand with two napkins because she didn't want her to put her, her dirty hands on her face. And that's why she looks so good. This is my friend Carolyn Lazard. This is my aunt Heather and my cousin Malik's first baby, Naraya. That's my cousin Chloe in Brooklyn. Uh, this is my friend Leilani Miller on her 30th birthday in New Orleans. And I just knew I wanted to take a photograph of her on her birthday. And so I was just like, I would like you to lie there. And I don't know, I just thought it would look striking. I can't really quite remember what was in my head. I just knew that that was the thing I wanted to see. This is my Tante Rita looking at photographs on my aunt's couch in Pennsylvania. That's my cousin Kennedy and my other cousin Joshua in the corner. I've been photographing them. Like one of my first big photo projects was those two. And these are my cousins, Aiden and Isaiah, also in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I know that time kind of, so. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think that uh, there are a few questions already from, uh, people who are joining us. And this is definitely a good time to add another question. Um, 
I'm just going to jump right in. Can you guys see them as well? I'll read yeah. them aloud, but I'll, uh, I just want to make sure you guys can read them if you want to. So there was a question earlier uh, from Stephen who says, first, love the book. Uh, mm -hmm. Second, what were some of the toughest hurdles that you had when bringing the three different series together? And I feel like you guys spoke to it a little bit, but maybe if there's anything else that you wanted to add. I think just making sure that everything flowed well in a book, making sure that they didn't feel like there was any big, like, stops or starts so you know it felt awkward just making sure the flow went well and that helps with the text in the middle and the paper choices I think and there were three you know in addition to I don't know that it was mentioned earlier I don't recall if like also mm -hmm. there are there is different paper was selected for each group as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so there's another question from S.B. Cooper saying uh, that they are aware that you are an artist in resident at MICA. Mm -hmm. um, and they're asking, what are you working on there? Yeah, I'm, as the artist in residence at MICA, I'm actually going, I'm actually working with the grad students that are in the um, photography and media program that Bill Gaskins actually runs there. And I really, I got to kind of help them with their thesis project. It's actually really fun. And I talk with them about what they're doing. Um, they show me work. We kind of have conversations about decisions that they're deciding to make. Yeah, that's, that is what I'm doing today. Sounds great. Um... Bella writes, I was wondering if you could speak more to how you engage with pe the people uh, to make the images and how you consider um, people you're making images of. Do you think of them as subject collaborators or something else? Yeah, um, how I engage with people is sometimes like for the Trinidad work, a lot of these times, a lot of times I was with family so when I saw people and met people that might know my family someone that I'm with already and sometimes I just might think things look striking and I'll ask for a photograph so I usually just approach people like um I tell them what I'm doing very honestly like um oh, I'm, I'm making photographs in Trinidad I really like the way you looked when you stepped through the light or I really like this shirt or something because there's always a reason why to, I want to take a photograph it doesn't like and then if they say yes, I'm like, thank you. And then I take, you know, and I take my picture in the way that I want it, or I might talk to them a little bit. Um, if they say no, I say thank you, and I keep it pushing, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think of them as subjects, collaborators, or something else. I don't know, honestly, I think of them as people, and I think that I'm a weirdo with the camera. And so I already know that there's a weird situation happening. I'm like, I, I don't know why, I just have to do this thing. And I try my best to give people their pictures back. I don't always succeed. I try my best to, you know, send JPEGs and stuff. People can put them out, use them how they want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to like get into this further and, and hear more about this sharing of images and printing out JPEGs and putting them on Facebook, but maybe that's for another conversation because uh -huh. yeah, I mentioned it earlier with sharing them kind of immediately with friends and and like, you know, just not necessarily thinking about them in this like kind of precious, more precious kind of fine art way. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, um, yeah, maybe <laughs> we'll continue that in part two. Um, there's quite a few questions coming in. We're going to try to get through everything. Uh, blown away by your work and love your energy. How do you balance being present in a space as a person and then directing your attention uh, to making images? Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the photography as meditation thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, photography is meditation. I'm just looking. And... Um, Sometimes I miss, I miss a lot of photos. There's, there's, there's photos in my head. One time I was in Mexico with my friend and we were riding bikes down this pathway, a dirt road. And I, I always remember she looked back at me and she was in a spot of light with a red hat on. Picture I didn't take. I still think about that picture all the time. Sometimes I miss, I miss a lot of photographs. Um, 
And you know, the ones I miss, I miss. The ones I can take, I can take. I try my best to take the ones I can take. And sometimes I don't photograph at all. I just look. Are you ever shooting in color? Mm -hmm. I'm like shooting you in color right now. You're, you're shooting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, next question. Uh, my question is about why and how you decided that the form of the book was the direction for these bodies of work. Mm -hmm. um, um, I didn't necessarily decide. I think I threw a Hail Mary at Capricious <laughs> and they caught that shit. <laughs> And I was like, oh, <laughs> and then a book it became. And it was, a. and I think it, I think eventually it would have become a book. It probably wouldn't have been like this, but that's what happened for real. Are the Capricious Awards, are they still open or are they just closed, right, Annika? They just closed for the year. Yep. Open again next year though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everybody should sign up from email lists of Capricious, Aperture, Printed Matter, learn about upcoming opportunities. Um, uh, Martina writes, stunning images. Sasha, can you speak about how you create or envision compositions since most of your work seems to be more spontaneous? Do you think mm -hmm. about what you'd like to create beforehand? Um, sometimes I do think about what I'd like to create beforehand. Um, I'm not one of those, I know some photographers, like something that I always thought was cool about Dina Lawson was the way that she talked about um, how things come to her and then you know, she draws things and stuff like that. I never, that's not really my way, but if you are one of those people, you should do that because I feel like it's very helpful. But I kind of just, well, I'm um, just like technical stuff. Like if I want a, a shallow depth of field or certain things like that. And then when I come to something like this kind of look and make decisions when I get there. Yeah. Uh, there's two questions actually about different, using different formats. I may just combine them. Okay. So uh, Patrice writes, Sasha, you're still making a lot of work with the four by five. How does working with large format camera change the way you make photographs? And then later Lee Stokes asks, Sasha, do you ever shoot on 35 millimeter film? Or do you mm -hmm. want to? So I'm shooting uh, uh, material, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I shoot on 35 millimeter film. Um, color right now. Um, but I, at the moment, I was kind of really into large format. So for the four by five question, I think when you're shooting large format, um, it just makes you slow down. And then people get to interact with the camera, which I think is really cool. I like that when you like, I like when I take the camera out and people are like, what is this? And I'm like, it's a camera. And then they look at the back. <laughs> they look at the back of the bag. And then, you know, I think that's really cool. I like that. And people get really into it. And then they're like, man, I should take photos. I'm like, take photos. Yeah. So, uh, working in life. Yes, it definitely does change the way I photograph. Yes, I do think it does. Yeah. Thank you. Um, John Levy writes, could you talk some more about how you sequence the photos in the sections of the book? Did you make a lot of changes over time or did you arrive at a sequence and it felt right and you stuck with it? So there's this great photograph of you, Sasha. And I guess the question is, how long did that take? Um, some sections were much easier than others just because of the amount of work. So I think the first and the second sections came together pretty easy. And I think I sequenced by flown by feelings and sometimes I sequence by things that I know like like how one image is going to do next to another sometimes I'm like it's too many portraits in the row that needs to be broken up sometimes it's like um yeah how are things moving with each other so and then honestly I think that there might be another iteration of sequence of these work who knows you know what I'm saying I don't think I want to like um, say like this is it um I think that like each version of a thing you do is the iteration of the thing so yeah I, I stuck with this one but who knows what could happen to people great um looks like we have one more mm -hmm. uh 
So it looks, uh, so the question from Diane is all the photos you showed were of people. Does the book have photos without people? Why or why not? Mm -hmm. is, all the photographs I make are of people at that time. I don't always make some photographs of people. There's one photograph on the back. I know for sure. Actually, there's a few without people that has yeah, yeah. no people in it. Um, I think that in this current moment in time, I'm very interested in other people specifically. I'm interested in um, people that are worked for the daddy and people that were partying, particularly people, um, yeah, Black people. I think that's what I'm interested in. That's mainly my thinking behind it, that I'm very interested in people. And that I think um, as I become more interested in landscape in certain ways, I think I'll start taking more landscapes. But yeah, I think if you're really, I think you should go towards whatever it is that you're interested in. And if it's not people, then don't feel bad. And if it is people, don't feel bad either, I guess. I found quite a few actually. There's like, <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. Sasha and Annika, this was such a pleasure. Um, let's do this again very soon. I yeah, hope. thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Aperture. Please don't miss the show at Printed Matter. It's up for about another week. Um, purchase this book. Uh, yes. And, and spend time with this work. It's really... You won't regret it. Absolutely. Thank you, Annika. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you, Sunil. That was amazing. And Sasha, I'm going to, I think everyone should keep, take your advice of just keep doing the thing. Just keep making yeah, these things. Thing. Just keep on it. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. And uh, yes, visit the exhibition by the book. All of those good things. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. <laughs> thank you.